Hello again, and welcome to our online service. My name is Matt, and I am your student pastor here at the church at Severn Run. Today is a very exciting day for us as a church. Uh, it's exciting because we get to have this opportunity to be with you. You are a big part of this excitement for us, and we just want you to know we are really glad you're here. I'm glad to be here today. I get to share a message with you. Uh, it's not a part of a pre-existing series. It's not kicking off the next series. It's just for you. It's just for today and, and for whenever you watch this message. It's something that we hope is encouraging and there's a small challenge for us to, to walk away with as well. Yeah, I mentioned today is special. It's a little different. If you are new, if you're checking us out for the first or second time, we want you to know that today is something we call Leave Your Seat Sunday. So our church has committed that on the last Sunday of every month, we are going to go out into our community and serve. We are going to leave the building, leave the seats here uh, in our worship center, and we are going to go do what we say we love to do, which is to love well, live Jesus, and believe big, and, and to take that heart, take that energy to our, our neighbors, our community, uh, our schools, our businesses, our local nonprofits, so that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus in a special, intentional way, again, the last Sunday of every month. So there won't be a regular service if you come with us next week, either join us online or in person, you will see a live, awesome worship team uh, uh, you know, coming to you either here in the room, physically or online, um, you know, uh, virtually. We'll be live streaming our amazing worship, uh, a message and chances to connect and have community. So that the, the normal first three to four weeks of every month, that's what we offer for you all. And then on this last Sunday of every month, we have a special opportunity again to go and serve and then a special online service just for those of you who are home or out and abroad and are not able to be here to participate in the service projects. But we want you to know that everyone has a role to play in Leave Your Seat Sunday. Today, my hope is to share a message of encouragement and joy uh, that will also come along with a challenge for us all to consider. And this message is called Us For Them. You know, too much of life, of value, of identity is set through the lens of competition and comparison. I'm a pretty competitive person. I certainly enjoyed playing organized sports through school and after school, and I still to this day love playing board games or ping pong or occasionally still getting out and playing sports a little bit. Um, but right now, uh, you know, board games are a lot less physically demanding. So I just love the chance to compete, to have fun, right? To try and win and, su and succeed. Um, I'm curious though, you can talk about this as a family or whoever you're watching with, who's the most competitive person in your group? Who's the most competitive person in your family, your friend group? Uh, you know, maybe, maybe even kind of think about this among like your, your office mates or, or coworkers. Um, if you are watching as a family, you know, you're not going to like pick on this person, but like who are the competitive people in your life? Could be now or even growing up. I'm not telling you to tag anybody or mention them in the comments, but I guess if you do, I can't stop you. Just curious, who are the more competitive people around you? And is it you? Now, again, I like to be competitive, uh, competing, doing your best, trying to succeed. It's fun. It's challenging. It inspires us to grow. The other side we talked about was comparison. Now, it's competition and comparison. And comparison by itself is not a bad thing either, right? I mean, if I'm trying to make a shopping list and I'm trying to decide, you know, what fill in the blank to get, I can weigh my options with price or quality or where to get it. I mean, I can compare things and it's helpful. It informs me. Um, I could make a list of the greatest basketball players of all time. And I'm not, I'm not putting value on their life. I'm just saying, yeah, I think you're the best basketball player ever. Or I'm trying to pick which football team is going to win the Super Bowl next year which I think it's going to be the Chicago Bears. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't know if I could say that. Um, I'm a Bears fan, but it's I just can't lie to you guys. I do not think we're going to win the Super Bowl next year. However, all of this is good or can be good, but there is a place, there is a, a location in our heart and mind where competition and comparison are destructive. They don't belong there, Right? When identity or value comes from a place of competition or comparison, then we have a huge problem. We're not meant to operate with this us versus them mentality. You know, it goes against the very heart of God and against the mission in the kingdom of heaven. First of all, each of us are created in the image of God. Every single person listening to this message, you are created in the image of God 
which means that every family is full of people created in the image of God. Every community is full of families created in the image of God. Every nation is full of communities, full of families, full of people created in the image of God. So when we look for another place for purpose, identity, and value outside of what God, only God could put inside of us, not only are we going to find the wrong answer and the wrong value, but we're going to find a destructive path in the middle of it. We're, we're going to see that in our nature, it appears to always be a worldly desire to draw lines, to build walls, and to separate and divide because we, we don't see the, the thumbprint of God the same way on every person. Although we're all unique and we're all fearfully and wonderfully made, we look at that that gift that God gave us, the gift of diversity, the gift of being different, thinking different, walking different, talking different, and we start drawing lines and we start weighing and measuring and saying who is better, who is not. Even if we don't say it, we might live out that, that, that thought, that belief if it's taken root in our heart. But God doesn't play that game. And quite honestly, if he did, if God played a game of comparison, then we all would lose. Because the second point, is, is that we all have fallen short of the glory of God, right? That while God has every authority and every high ground to not only compete against us, but to thoroughly dominate us, he chose a different way, right? Like God has every, every moral high ground. God has every ability to set himself uh, apart from us and to have nothing to do with us because he is so much greater and so much mightier and so much more pure than we are but that is not what God did. So when we look at Romans 3.23, we see for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard, right? We can't compete. We can't compare with God. Uh, Friends, you know, we don't don't measure up ourselves against God's standard and feel like I've got it all down. I've figured it all out and I've nailed, you know, every opportunity in my life. But when the table was set for an us versus them showdown, that we were destined to lose, well, God flipped the script. Or we, let's keep reading Romans 3, 24. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin and people are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shed his blood, The sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past, for he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in the present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, his goodness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they huddled together together. And they declared that in the kingdom of heaven, it's not us versus them. It is going to be us for them. Friends, this is the good news for all people. This is the joy. This is the encouragement we have in Jesus Christ. That God so loved you, that he so loved your neighbor, he so loved your community, that the entire world, that Jesus came and died on the cross for your sins. Let's let's jump over to Romans chapter 5 to even get kind of more more joy and encouragement on this truth. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Verse three, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Verse six, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, you know, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. 
And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he was certainly able to save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now, verse 11, so now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends with God. I mean, friends, that is the gospel. That is the good news. That is us for them. That is God looking at you and saying, I'm going to put it all on the line for you. The person who had every right and moral authority to turn his back on us flipped the script and said, I am for you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit is here for you. So when we have every hope, every assurance that we know we are loved by God, us for them is the gift of Christ, again, giving himself for you and for me. Through that sacrificial love, our connection and relationship with God has been restored. So we are, you know, we who were once apart from God are now a part of God's family. The, the us for them mentality, it's a process of adoption. It's the posture of opening your heart and opening your home so that them is invited to become us. Jesus came to tear down every wall that separates us from God. And so through faith and trust, we might grow in love and we may hold tightly to our confident hope. This is our joy and encouragement this morning to remember and reflect on this promise of God, this life-changing salvation, to know and to cherish the truth that God is for you. So as we wrap up this morning, we're going to end on our challenge. Our challenge is that we need to reflect on and consider very deeply. So first, what is your next step to live in and live out in us for them mentality? The, the, to mirror the heart and the mind that Jesus has, the us for them heart and mission. Today, we might be struggling a little bit. Insecurity and doubt may have crept in and we may be you know, living under some of the pressure and, and, and some of the assumptions of competition or comparison. Our next step needs to, to be meditating on God's word. We need to be focusing and kind of bathing our soul in the hope to let it soak in the truth and promise of what God says about us and what he's done for us. Next, we all need to examine ourselves and to, to look for any competitions and comparisons that need to be removed. Uh, with political and racial tension, with disagreement on health care and, and, and health precaution for, for my community and this community, for just the, I don't know this person or I'm new and, and I'm, I'm unfamiliar with this. And this is all of these different walls, all of these different separations and divisions uh, for students. It's I go to this school, you go to that school sometimes, or or I'm not even sure you know, what to think about this family member right now. There's, there's just these separations. There's these tensions. The brokenness and chaos of our world has clouded and muddied the water and has made it less, less life-giving when we allow that, that competition and comparison to take root. So putting people and families and communities into categories, measuring and weighing worth and value by our own terms and our own limitations, this is not the work of the kingdom of God. We need to acknowledge those places where us versus them exists, and we need to address it through the lens of the gospel. There is a lot of extreme discourse in our, our country right now. There is everyone who votes this way is fill in the blank. Everyone who votes this way is fill in the blank. And, and if you're on this side of the aisle on this topic, here's an absolute statement. If you're on this side of this idea, here's an absolute you know, condemnation or judgment. We have to avoid that at all costs. I, mean, I have to avoid that at all costs. And while I may not say that out loud, I need to do the extra hard work to dig a little deeper and just ask myself, am I thinking that way? Am I treating people that way as if, as if I know their real true value and it's anything different than my own. As if I know what Jesus has done for me and what the God's heart of, of us for them is, but I decide who it's for and who gets it. We can't live that way. The, the, the mission of us for them is to invite all people into the house of God. It's to invite everyone into this family so that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, 
every tribe and every nation will be present until heaven is full. That is our mission. That is our ministry. So finally, we ask ourselves, as, a, as I'm finding the hope and joy and strength and confidence of knowing that God is for me, as I am uh, you know, identifying and cutting out some of the, you know, maybe it's kind of sunk down deep and I need to find, pull out some of the weeds on where maybe I'm letting competition and comparison affect my relationship with other people. Finally, we get to ask ourselves, so what is my next step to live out the us for them mission? How can my life-changing salvation take root and grow into world-changing love and service? So you know, today is Leave Your Seat Sunday, and we have people all around our community serving and, 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 and doing projects and making a difference, but that's one amazing opportunity. It's not the only opportunity. It can't just be one Sunday a month. It can't be one opportunity every so often. You know, This is a movement our church is beginning, but we hope and, and really, we all, to, all ought to be praying that this is this is a part of our DNA, that we are taking every opportunity and looking for those who are home today, where can I be the hands and feet of Jesus in my home, in my community? For those who are out serving, uh, doing a project is amazing, but if I know I'm doing it because of the grace and love of God that's overflowing from my heart, Right, like God has invited me in, God is for me, and now I get to go and carry the same mission of us for them. Who is it in my, my circle, my friends, my family, my neighbors, who needs to be invited in? Who is it that I need to reach out to? Who, who can I serve? You know, it is our great joy and blessing to be in a church community with you. We hope that you know that we are praying for you and that we are here for you, and, and we would love to, to know more about how we can care and, and love and build relationships together. You are not alone in this season. God is with you and he has created a family of believers to support you and come along together because we're all in this together. None of this are going through life alone. And in this, this joyful season, right? No matter what's going on, we have the joy of knowing that God is for us and he is inviting us to be for one another. We hope you all uh, join us next week. We're excited to share more of what God is doing through the church at Severn Run. And until then, you all have a great blessed day.